are many dazzling representation of stars in the National Gallery's collection that takes you on a whole history of painting, from early medieval work, from the fantastic religious paintings of Duccio, to the wonderful representations of nature in Turner's sublime paintings of the early 19th century, and then to the work of the Impressionists in the trouble and turmoil of late 19th century Paris. You can trace the entire history of European painting through this one element, the star. One of the best places for stargazing in the National Gallery's collection is on the clothing of the Virgin Mary. She was a very poor, humble girl from a very modest background, and artists really had to think about how you could represent her as she was supposed to be, as the Queen of Heaven. Duccio's Virgin and Child with Saints is for me one of the most magical and evocative small paintings in the National Gallery. It represents the Virgin with her son Christ, who's pulling at her robe. She's dressed in beautiful blue clothes with a wonderful star on it. The star shimmers and gleams, and it's actually made of gold itself. When we look at Velasquez's Immaculate Conception, what I think is really interesting about this for the modern eye is the way in which Velasquez has made her look as if she's spotlit. There's something almost wonderful about the way that the stars have been painted, these very delicate and precise sharp pinpoints of light compared to the broader application of paint across the rest of the picture. Turner's Evening Star is one of a very large number of paintings that were left to the nation by Turner. So this was a work that was in his studio when he died. The sun is setting and the moon is coming up and we have uh, twilight and the first star is in the sky but the sky is not quite yet dark enough for it to be very bright but bright enough for us to see. And Turner has painted the little star and particularly the reflection has this fantastic thick paint which shows not just the reflection but also the movement of the sea. So this sort of moment in between times where the light is about to change. In about 1858, Corot visited his friend, the artist De Camp, at De Camp's studio in the forest of Fontainebleau. As a gift, he painted for him four large panels on wood showing the four times of day, morning, noon, afternoon, night. The most dramatic is night, and the night sky is particularly interesting for the way in which he paints stars. Conventionally, some stars are blobs of white applied on the inky blue. Much more unusually, other stars, perhaps meant to be more distant in the sky, he's simply taken the end of his brush and flicked paint out of the surface so that there are indentations. They read to the eye as a slightly different color, and remarkably, we also read them as stars in the sky. With the Impressionists, the end of the 19th century, they are no longer trying to delineate forms. They're trying to evoke atmospheres, the look of a night sky, which is a certain kind of glow often rather than specific stars in the skies with a given shape. And that is perfectly matched to a new freedom of movement of the brush across the surface. Pizarro's Boulevard Montmartre at night shows the tension of the modern city between artificial light and the faint glow of the night sky. It was no longer a magical time because darkness could be defeated by artificial light. There are no stars depicted in the picture, but we know beyond the artificial lights of the city, they're twinkling away as they always have. And that absence gives a certain poignancy to the painting.